inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. We are really living in unprecedented times. In the last month, 22 million Americans have been laid off from their job. And a lot of these people are good, hardworking people with a good income, good credit score, a good rental history. They're the kind of people that we would love to rent to, but through no fault of their own, they've fallen on tough times. And if they don't have the money to pay rent, it makes it really difficult for us as landlords to stay in business. So I was curious to see how this pandemic is affecting some of our recent guests that we've had on the podcast. So on the show today, we're going to be checking in with four recent guests to see how they're dealing with this, to see how many of their tenants are paying rent and to see how they're managing to survive through this. So let's take a really quick break. We'll thank our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll meet our first guest. The first step in buying a rental property is to get pre-qualified. And I would suggest you work with a lender that specializes in working with investors because the last thing you want to have happen is to get to closing and find out the money's not there and you can't close. The lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's a nationwide lender, and she'll pre-qualify you for free if you mention Rental Income Podcast. Find out more today. Contact Chaley at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E LendingGroup.com. NMLS 42056. When I'm doing research to buy a new rental property, there's a lot of different websites, apps, and then a spreadsheet that I use to do my analysis. It's really kind of a convoluted process. Well, there's a much easier way. There's an app called Ask Rick. That's R-I-C for Rental Income Calculator. Ask Rick makes it really easy to find and analyze rental properties. You can see all the properties for sale in an area. If something looks good, you can press one button. It'll analyze the property for you. It'll figure out the rent amount. It'll figure out your mortgage payment, all your expenses, and give you your cash flow. If you're ready to move forward, you can make an offer right there on the app. Or you can send the information over to your realtor to do some more investigation into the property. You can try it out for free right now. Just search for Ask Rick. That's R-I-C. Ask Rick in the App Store. Or go to JustAskRick.com. That's JustAskRick.com. Our first guest is Brad Spencer. Brad is from Indiana, and he has 12 rental properties. So, Brad, out of your 12 properties, how many of your tenants paid rent? I had nine tenants pay me rent. Okay. But three of them didn't. Wow. Okay. Well, I guess that's pretty good. Were you expecting that going into the month? No, I honestly, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I don't really keep up with each tenant as far as have they gotten a new job or if they've gone a different position on their careers or if any type of, uh, divorce or any type of, of, of instance of them not being able to be paid. Yeah. Pay me rent. Uh, no, I, I don't keep up with them on okay. that. Okay. Now, a lot of people that I talked to at the end of March were saying that they were going to proactively reach out to their tenants and see if they were going to have any trouble paying rent. And you know, I think that's kind of a double-edged sword sometimes. Like You don't want to maybe open the door to making it okay to, to not pay rent. What did you do? Did you reach out to people to see if they were going to be okay, or did you just wait for the first to come around? Well, I, I, I'm from the South, and we have an old saying, let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> so uh, I don't go out and call my tenants and say, hey, are you going to be able to pay me rent this month right. because of all this going on? That's kicking the hornet's horn yeah. nest. So to me, it's a wait-and-see approach. Uh, nine of those tenants that I mentioned – Paid me on time, act like nothing's happened. The Great. three of the tenants called me and said, Brad, um, we're in a tough situation. We have lost our jobs. Uh, we have small children. We cannot pay you rent this month. My reaction was, I completely understand. Our goal is now is to get you back on your feet. And you have small children. And food, shelter, and clothing is the main thing. We got the shelter in place. Now let's worry about getting your income co- going going up. So I mentioned to him about different places that are hiring here local, UPS, pizza delivery drivers, uh, FedEx, 
some of the hospitals, hotels, all have listings that they will hire immediately. So they were very receptive on that list. That's great. Uh, they did call. Okay. So do you feel like they're probably going to have rent for next month? I hope so. Uh, okay. Again, it's a wait and see approach. Yeah. I'm so you're not wait till they call me and say, okay, Brad, we got a job and we are able to pay this month. And if that's the case, I'll say, okay, please pay me this month's rent and add $10 or $20 or whatever you can afford from your past rent on. Okay. So and you're not, we'll that, you're not, that way. you're not necessarily going to make them next month pay the back rent and the no. future rent. Okay. So, no, I think that's too heavy. Of a yeah. Hit. Yeah. So you'll just have them make it up, whatever they're comfortable with. If it's an extra $20 a month and it, it takes however long to, to get caught up, you'll, you're flexible with that. Oh, absolutely. Because I don't want to kick anybody out. Yeah. And I doubt any landlord out there wants to kick anybody out. Sure. Especially absolutely. if they're good tenants. Yeah. Things like this happens in life, you know, it's Murphy's law. Yep. And, uh, it unfortunately happens to tenants and, we don't want to, I don't want to be in a position where I want to kick anybody out Yeah, because it's too painful, especially doing this now. And if they got small children, yeah, nobody and, wants to kick anybody out. And especially, I mean, in this environment where, you know, this isn't anyone's fault. It wasn't like they did something wrong. I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic, you know, that completely unforeseen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about your other tenants? tenants? Like they all paid on time. Do you have any indication on if you're going to have any trouble with them in the future? Again, it's a wait and see approach. They paid this past month without any problem that they didn't mention anything to me about losing their job or perfect their hours being cut or somebody being relocated. Yep. So to me, that's good news. I love it. Okay. Now the other thing that I think is a real benefit to you and probably makes things a lot easier for you going through this is that you have all your properties paid off. That that must be a big relief. Extremely. I couldn't imagine, you know, having a second mortgage or having HELOCs or any type of financing up to the hilt to where I totally depend on rent coming in to uh, to pay my bills because that is beyond scary to me. Yeah. I'll, I've been in that situation one uh, once and I'll never go back to that because – like I mentioned on your previous shows, I, I follow the Dave Ramsey method. I make sure everything I buy is paid off in case something like this ever happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's the things you don't see that hits you the most, like this virus. Nobody saw this coming. Right. Nobody knew the effects of what this was going to cause. Right. And uh, when these renters called me and said, Brad, I can't pay rent this month, my main goal was to get them back on their feet, not me. I didn't, I, I knew I was going to be fine. But I want to make sure that they get back on their feet, that their kids are being fed, that their kids have a, a place to lay their heads at night, and they get back in a pattern of, of building back their, their income. That's a good guy right there. That's Brad Spencer. If you want to hear more from Brad, he's been with us twice before. He was on episode 227 and then again on 247. And if you're driving or doing something else right now and you want to go back and look up anything we talk about today, I'm going to have any links mentioned at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 259. Joining us next from Colorado is Fleming Shutram. Fleming was actually here a month ago, right when things were kind of getting started with COVID-19. And Fleming mentioned on that episode that he was getting ready to do a showing after we were done with the interview. Fleming, did you ever get that property rented out? Unfortunately, the answer is no. What happened is I did a couple of showings and then the stay-at-home order was sharpened and all of a sudden low-income housing was no longer in the list of, of supporting getting that um, housing available to low-income people. And so now showings are actually punished with a fine up to a thousand dollars, and wow. it doesn't seem as yeah, it's just unlawful. So, so I'm not doing it. Do you have any other vacancies beside that that one property? Yes, I have had two other tenants move out and basically break their lease again due to um, coronavirus and job loss and just not being able to um, make lease payments anymore. 
Wow. And I've been lucky they've moved out and left the units really good, but I can't refill them with the current stay-at-home orders. Okay, so you've got three vacant units, so you're losing money on that. And how many doors do you have total? 35. 35. Okay, so you got that three vacant. How did April work out? Did everybody pay or did you have any trouble getting rent out of some of the tenants? Uh, it looked pretty good initially. Most people um, did end up paying. And, and then uh, right now I'm stuck at about 25% of people not having paid. For me, that's about, um, it's well north of 10 grand. And it's such that I actually can't cover all the mortgage obligations right now. Wow, that's horrible. So are you just dipping into savings to pay the mortgage or did you ask for a forbearance? You know, I have an interesting scenario. I'm trying to get a refinance of my primary residence and interest rates are really low right now. And so I already paid the $650 appraisal fee. Everything I hear from that lender is do not apply for those forbearances because it could jeopardize approval of this loan. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So you you just have to kind of dip into your rainy day fund and keep the mortgages going. Are are you stressing right. out? Like I, I can't imagine what this must feel like. Is it really tough going through this right now? Yes, I think it is, and I think there's peaks and valleys to it. And I'll watch a TV broadcast, and my my anxiety level will spike. And then what I have to remember is there's people like Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, and following the dot com crash way long ago. People said for years that Amazon would never turn a profit and it was always going to be this investor-funded, hyped-up company that just wasn't a sustainable economic model. And I think for us as long-term real estate investors and landlords who want this to be the seed of our retirement and future abundance, we have to remember this is just a cycle and we'll get through it. Mm -hmm. And playing that inner game of not getting so worn down and exhausted that we sell our properties at a loss in this post-coronavirus uh, dip we might have is really important. We need to stay strong and remember that there are better times to come. Absolutely. I, I think that's really good advice. I mean, things are going to turn around. This is hopefully just a, a temporary thing. Now, the, the tenants that didn't pay, are they applying for unemployment or do they have any kind of, do you have any indication that they will get caught up? That's a very great question, and I think there's no pat answer to it. But what I do find, and I've seen this uh, long term uh, in my 20 years of landlording, is that the tenants who are really good workers are not good at getting assistance when they really authentically need it. And then there's other people who just fundamentally aren't very interested in being good workers who have figured out how to get assistance every step of the way. And I think that pattern continues. I have been letting people know that TurboTax, for example, is doing free tax returns so people get on the radar for that stimulus check and right. have been letting people know that. But I don't control whether they actually go through that or if they have internet access to actually work those kind of things. You know, that's a good point that th- there's money out there that that the government is adding $600 a, a week onto whatever the unemployment amount is. Those uh, $1,200 stimulus checks are going out. So if there's a way to help your tenants apply for unemployment or make sure that they're qualified for the $1,200, that's only going to benefit you and th- that government money is out there. That's Fleming Schutrumpf. If you want to hear more from Fleming, he's been with us twice before. He talked about how he retired off his rental income at age 41 on episode 135, and then he was with us last month on 254. Fleming has also written two really good real estate books that I highly recommend. The first one is called Buy Your First Investment Property Fast, and his most recent book is The Investor's Guide to Passive Income from Real Estate Partnerships, and I've got links to both those books and to his previous episodes on the website. Just go to rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 259. Next up is Mike Connolly. Mike is a property manager from California and Mike manages 500 rental properties. So I thought he'd be a good person to talk to because 
he's dealing with so many different tenants. So, Mike, how did how did it go? How did April look for a rent collection? Well, Dan, we have a interesting uh, demographic for our tenants. I would say two thirds of them are uh, high tech workers. They're in IT, and so they uh, most of them have uh, are not able to go to their office. They're working out of their home, but um, their compensation is continued. And so they're uh, able to work remotely out of their home almost as effectively as working in their office. So uh, we've got probably two thirds of our tenant base made up of uh, those kinds of workers. Then the other one third or a mix, I'd say overall about 25 percent of my tenants are have been laid off or furloughed. So I was expecting uh, April rent to be a challenge. Our rents are due on the first, late after the second. Almost all of our tenants are renting single family homes and all of our tenants, except for about a dozen out of 500, paid their rent on time, no questions asked. I love uh, hearing that. that. That's great yeah. news. Yep. The other 12 asked for a slight discount or could they make a 50% of their payment on the first, 50% on the 15th, which was no problem. That's great. So the people that asked for the discount, did they come out and ask for that? Or was that something that you worked out from talking to them? They did. You know, most people know that the first thing they got to pay each month is their rent, if they're renters. And so, uh, uh, all, all I believe all of those uh, dozen called me a few days ahead of time, some even a couple weeks ahead of time, and asked if I could be flexible with their rent, that they'd lost their job, uh, hopefully temporarily. And I reminded them, uh, because I'm fair, but I'm also firm, I reminded them that, you know, the owners have a mortgage with this uh, property, and it's not going to be forgiven. Uh, You're getting a stimulus check. Hopefully you've got some savings or money that you can borrow. And hopefully your employer has filed with, uh, you know, um, for the um, PPP program. And uh, so that's that's kind of, you know, how I responded before giving giving them uh, a concession. The other thing that, that you've done for your tenants, which I think is a great idea, is you sent everyone out a gift basket. What was in the gift basket? The gift basket, Dan, um, was a kind of a combination. It had about 20 items in it, a combination of fun, uh, faith, and practicality. Basically, um, there's a whole little industry out there on the internet with coronavirus gifts. So started with a roll of toilet paper with a little sticker on it that said, I survived the toilet paper crisis of 2020. It had uh, some candy in it a journal, a, uh, about 15, um, thinking of you cards that they could send out to friends and relatives, uh, a pocket knife saying, um, like a little, uh, Swiss army knife that said, um, Corona 2020. And, um, the, the, the little basket cost about $35 and was charged back to the owners. <laughs> we delivered 350 of them over the weekend probably 25 texts or emails saying, Oh my gosh, thank you. So you figure, you know, for every one person that responded positively, there were 10 that would have, but didn't. So it was overwhelmingly positive and it buys a little bit of goodwill. I'd rather the owner spend $35 for a gift basket that we put together and deliver than have to give a $500 rent concession next month. Absolutely. So where do you see things going from here for, for next month? Like what do you think is maybe the best and the worst case scenario for, for a rent collection for May? We'll probably have, I'm going to, I'm going to imagine at least, uh, Oh, um, 30 or 40 tenants that just, uh, we're going to have to work out a payment plan, maybe defer some rent, give a a slight uh, discount on the rent. So we'll, we'll be flexible and I'll, I'll handle those on a one-on-one basis. That's Mike Connolly. I think Mike has some great ideas. If you want to hear more from Mike, he was on episode number 232. Joining us next from West Virginia is Jennifer McQuery. Jennifer, so I understand that you had a couple of tenants that didn't pay rent this month. I did, but it was not as bad as I expected. Um, 
out of the 34 units that I have out there for rent at the moment, um, 26 paid in full. And then I've got four tenants that, um, either didn't pay at all or made partial payments. Did they reach out to you to tell you they were going to be late or that they weren't going to be able to pay or? Um, they did. Most of them did. One did not. Um, the others did call in advance and let me know what was going on. Um, one that called in advance has already now paid. So they just paid though. So I've gone most of the month without the money and then they just, just paid okay. because you know they either got unemployment money or their stimulus check or you know they got some source of money that came in. So, so the, the people they, that didn't pay, did they all get laid off? Yeah. And, and I have a a suspicion that I have a lot of tenants out of work, but a lot of our companies here are continuing to pay people as long as they can. So I think even if they're out of work, they're, they're still getting income and getting paid. And then others I suspect are getting unemployment and paying. So I I think a lot more out of work than aren't paying. You know, that's really the great thing right now. I mean, with the unemployment amount being raised and with the stimulus checks going out, Tenants have money, so you know. Hopefully, they'll continue to pay rent. Are Are you nervous at all about about next month or going into June in July that that maybe you'll have some trouble, or are you not really thinking about that right now? Uh, I think it's going to get worse the more months that this goes on. So yes, yeah. Uh, hopefully, the people that you know, have gotten unemployment are going to continue to get that. So they won't be a problem. It's people like me, people that are small business owners, that there's really, as much as they keep saying, there's these programs out there for the small businesses. uh, No one I know has gotten any of the money and thinks that they're going to get the money. So people that are self-employed are going to have a real hard time. So I worry about those tenants. And as time goes by, there's just going to be no money. You know, obviously food comes first. Sure. So I I have a feeling as months go by and those people have no money left that I'm I'm probably going to have more tenants not paying. Boy, that is scary. Well, Jennifer, hang in there. We're going to get through this. Things are going to get better. That was Jennifer McQuery. If you want to hear more from her, she was on episode number 234. Before we wrap things up, I just want to point out a couple of positive things and pass along a couple of tips. The first one is if your tenant tells you that they can't pay rent because they lost their job, make sure that they've applied for unemployment because like we talked about earlier, they have increased the amount of unemployment. And in most states, it's going to be somewhere between $900 and $1,000 a week. So make sure that they've applied. The other thing to keep in mind is that they have opened up unemployment beyond W-2 workers. Right now, if you're self-employed, if you're a 1099 worker, they are paying unemployment. So make sure that that they've applied. The other bit of information that Brad Spencer passed along is that he's giving his tenants a list of jobs. If your tenant tells you they're out of work, there are plenty of places right now that are hiring. Um, Give them a list. Put together a list of a couple of places in, in your area that are hiring and help point them in the right direction to how they can find a job. Mike Connolly had a great idea about offering a discount. If someone is just a couple hundred dollars short, it's probably better to give them a discount and get some rent than not getting any rent at all. So keep that in mind. And then also, I I love the idea of giving a gift basket. I I think that's a great way to build some goodwill with your tenants. So put together a little gift basket and leave it to them. I I think your, your tenants will really appreciate it. Well, if you want to look up any of the links for anything that uh, we mentioned on this episode or anyone's previous episodes, I've got them all at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 259. I'd like to thank today's sponsor for making this episode possible. It's Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. Right now, with all this uncertainty in the world, it's a great time to lower your expenses. And a great way to lower your expenses is to refi your mortgage. The rates are very close to historic lows right now, and you may be able to lower your expenses and maybe even quite a bit by refining your loans. If you want to see how much money you could possibly save, 
talk to Chaley Ridge. Her, you can find her information on her website. Just go to ridgelendinggroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E, lendinggroup.com. If you mention Rental Income Podcast, she will waive all the pre-qualification fees. NMLS 42056. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. We've got new interviews every single week. And if you subscribe, you'll get notified as soon as they come out. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.